Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantin system of equations. The Diophantin equation is an equation that has integer solutions and sometimes it could be rational solutions. And the system means we have more than one equation. So A, B, C are integers, positive and negative, and zero, and we're going to be solving for them. Normally, you would need three equations except for special cases. Of course, there are some special situations for real numbers too, but in general, you would need as many equations as variables or as the number of variables. But in this case, we have a Diophantine system, so two equations will suffice. So, how do we solve the system? A, B, C are integers, is what we're going to do. First of all, this problem was slightly different. I think it was in 1984 or something like that, which was taken from a math competition or contest. I can't remember exactly. If you do know, please let me know. But this was a, a math Olympiad problem. And when I say math Olympiad, don't get me wrong. It's not, I'm not always talking, up, talking about the international math Olympiads or any other national level. It could also be a math competition at middle or high school level, which leads to those. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. So I modify the numbers a little bit to reflect this year and next year. So we're going to go ahead and subtract these equations. Why? Because their difference is one. And actually getting one is very helpful if you're solving Diophantin equations because one can only be factored so much, right? So when you subtract, you're going to get AB plus C minus A minus BC equals one. Now notice that we can kind of group these terms together like this, AB minus a and then plus c I can write it as minus c uh, plus bc and how is that helpful I'll tell you now in a little bit we can go ahead and actually factor out uh, a factor here uh, let me do this in a better way okay so I'm gonna write it as a b minus a plus c minus bc okay now we're going to go ahead and do the following. Take out an A, that's going to give me B minus 1. And then take out a negative C, that's going to give me B minus 1 again. So now we have a common factor, right? So we can go ahead and take out B minus 1. And that's going to give us A minus C equals 1. So from two equations, we got a single equation, uh, which could be considered a bad thing. But it's good because now we, we got 1. And one has only so many factors, it's going to be a lot easier than dealing with 2024. And um, couldn't we have added the equations? We could have. And if you added the equations, let's take a look at the original ones, you would get 4047. And then this would still be factorable, but you would have to look at the factors of 4047. Do you think that is a prime number? Who knows? Let me know if you do know what it is and we can easily check that but let's just proceed with subtraction but definitely adding both equations could be another method okay let's go ahead and take a look so here's what we got and the product is equal to one so that's a nice thing why because one can only be factored into one times one or negative one times negative one why so can't you do two times one half? Well, if A, B, C are integers, then it's not going to happen, right? Because the difference of two integers cannot be a fraction. Make sense? I mean, obviously, right? If one of them is an integer, then the other one isn't. So what do we do? We look at both cases and guess what? I'm also going to talk about what Wolfram Alpha can give us for this kind of problem. I'm probably not going to show you. I don't think I have a screenshot here. I don't think I included that. Maybe I did. Who knows? Uh, looks like I'm missing it. But anyways, you get that. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you the findings. So let's go ahead and take a look at both cases. What are those cases? First case is when b minus 1 is equal to 1 and a minus c is equal to 1. So you got to remember a, B, C are integers. So the first equation easily gives us B equals 2. But the second equation only gives us the relationship between A and C. So what am I going to do? Well, remember, you have the original equations still, right? They still exist, don't they? So let's consider the first equation. A, B plus C is 2024. By the way, I don't think it matters which one you use, but here's what I'm going to do. B is 2, I know that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and replace this B with 2. That's going to give me 2A, or not 2A, that didn't work. Oh man, I missed the opportunity of 2B. But anyways, 2A plus C equals 2024. And then we have another equation. Yay, that gives me a nice system. Super duper uh, nice, right? So we can go ahead and add these equations and eliminate C. 3A equals 2025. Do you think 2025 is divisible by 3? Yes, divisible to rule tells us 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9, so it's divisible. What happens? Well, what do you get if you divide it? So here's what I'm thinking. 1,800 or 1,800, if you divide by 3, you're going to get 600. If you divide 225 by 3, you're going to get 75. Add those numbers up, and you'll get the answer. What was the first one? 675. Yay! So this is A. Great. But how do you find the other one from here? Well, if A is 675, we know that A minus C is 1. So C is 1 less than A because their difference is 1. So C is going to be 674. What was B again? B was 2. Oh, great. Let's go ahead and write that down here as well. That gives us our first ordered triple. Such a fancy word, right? Ordered triple. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and put it in a nicer form or maybe we can do it at the end how about that let's go ahead and find the other case and then we'll put it together with the nice curly braces in the set notation so what's the second case the second case is when they're both equal to negative one remember we said that hey both of them can be so let's rewrite it b minus one times a minus c equals one now both of these can be negative one so b minus one can be negative one this one and a minus c can be negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, in case you didn't know that. From here we get b equals 0. Wow, that is pretty interesting, isn't it? We were talking about 0, remember? So one of the numbers can be 0. So let's go ahead and work with the first equation again. But if you want to go with the second, that's fine too. And actually that's kind of more fun because it makes the whole thing disappear and gives us a directly. So that's kind of nice. If b is 0, then a is 2023. Cool. And we got the value of a and b. What is c? So if a is 2023, b mu uh, c must be 1 more than a because their difference is negative. So c is larger. And that must be 2024 next year. Not yet. So that gives us a equals 2023, b equals 0, and c equals 2024. Let's go ahead and put these together. Oh, by the way, I forgot to, almost forgot to tell you. What does Wolfram Alpha give us? And you can definitely check this for yourself, even because I'm not showing you any screenshots. But please do check. And if you get a different answer, let me know. But this is what I found. Wolfram Alpha can only find one solution. Ha ha. Too bad. Anyways, so here's our solutions. It has ordered triples. 675, comma 2, comma 674. And the second one is the one that contains the years and zero, 2023, comma, zero, comma, 2024. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comma. Don't forget to comma, no, not comma, comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.